I, I, I titled it, I said, The Genesis of Distortion. The reason why Nigeria exists today. In our video today, we have a radio personality, public speaker on air personality, a rice television media character, and moderator, TV host, and writer, Rufai Useni, who is a recognized Nigerian television moderator, keeps on sparkling as a co host at Arise Television Media, a main news and media organization. Rufai editorial and examination on political projects have solidified his situation as a regarded voice in the business. Do you know that Rufai isn't just a writer? Yes, in addition, a minister that teaches the expression of God. Hear what he has for us Nigerians. I, I, I titled it, I said the genesis of distortion. The reason why Nigeria it is today is because there's a genesis to the distortion. It didn't start today. And I'll take you back to some key dates. I'll take you back to the year 1914. The year 1914 was the year they amalgamated the Northern and the Southern Protectorate. But before then, the British had first amalgamated the Southern Protectorate. Because you see, when they came, they met us fighting ourselves. Prior to that time, we had fought the Kiriji and the Jalomi Wars. So in the South, for instance, when the British came, the only thing they had to do was just to unite the warring factions. Because the Jeshakiti Parakbo were fighting deep, the Oyo people and all of that. So we were fighting and we had made a lot of slaves. Most of the people that went from the Kiriji and Jalomi Wars were those that went as slaves to Latin America. Those are the people that came back as what we call the Agudaos. These are the likes of the Darochas. So that's why you see that Lagos Island is filled with a lot of Brazilian architecture. They even celebrate a Fanti festival. In fact, we eat Frijon in Christmas. Frijon is not native to us. It's Portuguese food. So those were the cultures they brought back. But how did we get those cultures? Because we were fighting. So they said the kingdom of God suffered violence. I know this violence can take us before. We were already fighting from Heather too. Then the British came, settled the fight, then they colonized. The first inroad of the British in what is called Lagos Colony today came in the middle 1800s when two people too were fighting over the throne of Lagos, Kosoko and Akitoi. So they called in the British to come and settle fights. But you see, when you call a bigger man to come and settle fights of something that is very juicy, what do they do? They take it from you. So when Akitoi went aboard a ship called the HMS Prometheus on the Lagos Marina here, and he said, Mio Feko Tore, the British said, we don't know what you're talking about. Sign this edict that you will cede Lagos to us. So Lagos became a crown colony, and that's why in 1906, the first thing we did was the Southern Protectorate, the other fighting parts of the Yoruba parts, and Lagos colony. And that's why you see up till 1960, in fact, when we gained independence in 1960, residents full born in Lagos had the chance to either choose a British passport or a Nigerian passport. But a lot of them opted for, uh, for Nigerian passports. So after that amalgamation, they started to rule over us. So guess the things they started to do to us. The first thing they did was they distorted our mindset. That's the genesis of the distortion. So they told you that your black color was never good enough. How did they do it? Indoctrinations. At first, they told you you have to go through an education system. And after the education system, they said your language was not good enough, so they taught you in English. Have you ever wondered that if we are taught mathematics in Igbo, there will have been more people with a sound understanding of mathematics than in English. So the first thing you had to do, you had to learn your colonizer's language. And when you, when you learn your colonizer's language, they took away your identity on how to think. So they call your customs and traditions idolatry. And the last thing they did was that they set up a fight between you because they know if you are united, then there's going to be a problem. You remember the Tower of Babel? Even our God knew the importance of unity. So what did they do? They changed the language. So they set up a fight. And it's so easy. How would they do it? They have agents. Stir up ethnic strife. Yorubas will fight Hausa, Hausas will fight Igbos and all of that. And they find the embers and they constantly do it. So the first genesis of distortion was the initial colonialism and they continued. In fact, they did it up till 1959 when we had the first elections, the 12th of December. You know what they deliberately did? That election, we know who won the election, who had more votes. The NCNC had more votes. But originally the British had planned that it was going to be a hung parliament. You know what they call a hung parliament? A hung parliament is when there's no clear winner in a parliamentary system. So you have to form a government of national unity. The British have known that it will be either the Yorubas and the Igbos, the Action Group or the NCSC. And 
the MPC. The MPC was standard. So that was how they did it. And that was what happened. But they knew that was going to bring a very big problem. You had a boisterous action group in opposition. It was going to be a problem. And they knew it was not going to last. And they knew that it was going to open more fault lines that led to the war in 66. So have you ever wondered that it was just after six years, after the first elections, then we, have another, we had another election in 64, 65 that spanned into 64, 65. So pretty much six years after the first election and two, three years after the second election, then we had a civil war that further deepened the fault line. So the first agent of distortion, and I'm sure we all know that, it will take years for you to recover from such a strife like that. So they are set the tone for what becomes the war and they are giving it to us at the beat and we are taking it. So once we are taking it, once we have fought the first civil war and all of that, and when the civil war started, they were the ones who started selling their weapons. So afterwards, they had started the first genesis of distortion. They had caused hatred amongst us. The hatred means that we will never be able to come together. And please, that's why I say every wall of hatred you have for your brother, break it. Because if they can take our unity, they can take our strength. So once they cause that hatred, we couldn't come together again. And that's what we've been circling with. In the last election, our problem was not about tribe or religion. But they made it about tribe or religion in the end. Because they know the genesis of distortion. So that's the first genesis of distortion. And that's why you see that life in Nigeria has now become something like an obeisant state. It is British. We talk about Leah Shari, but Leah Shari was a symptom of a deeper problem. We talk about Nigeria not work. It was not structured in a way that it was going to work. Because people wanted to take it for their own benefits. And that's why they don't like the truth. That's why they want to dominate every sphere. They want to shut people down in the media when you try to rat them out. So they deliberately put all of these things in place so that these systems and these hegemonies will not make you come together and work. You think all of a sudden Boko Haram just starting, it's also part of a grand system. Now that, that we've properly destroyed parts of this country, with kidnapping, insecurity and all of that, it's easy for non-state actors to roam wild. So there was a genesis to the national distortion and they knew what they were doing. Pre-independence, post-independence. This game is so big that our politicians are just being played as a pawn in the game. But you know why it's easy to play our politicians? Because they see their greed. A nation can never grow if the leaders are greedy. A nation can never grow if the leaders are greedy. Once they see greed, they exploit the greed of the leaders. Have you ever noticed why is it that most African countries are poor? Because their leaders are greedy. And they are taking advantage of the mindset of their leaders to destroy the nations. For what reason? Natural resource. Because they know we are blessed. You know Nigeria has the capacity to be a 10, 15 trillion dollar economy. Even more than that. America is about going to about on 20 trillion now. We have the capacity to be a superpower. But they know we have so much resource. So the next thing they do is they target the greed of our leaders and the selfish interests of our leaders. And they pull the buckle. So our leaders are so content with them having 5, 10 billion in their bank accounts. Rather than the collective development of the people. I mean look at, our, look at how bad the roads are in Lagos for a Lagos that collects a lot of taxes so it's not even about the politicians it's about the systems that break all of us down that create this national distortion even with our security system that's why you see it will now have different layers they will put ethnicity in it they'll put religion in it but these things are deeper than ethnicity and religion because they need you to be confused about the dimensioning of the systems they don't want you to think and know it so the truth is grow beyond the system that is fraudulent. That's why you see the way we are today with the Naira. All of a sudden, the Naira they used to be one to one with the dollar. Look at where it is today, one thousand four something. When they were defending the Naira, we kept on telling them no fundamentals. They thought I was joking. So that boy is a stupid boy. As the Naira not started rising again, Sometimes so we'll defend the Naira ever more. And we'll go back to square one again. But please don't think the Naira will go back to where it should be. I'm sorry. I'm in the church. I believe in hope and faith. But I'm a realist to the call. I don't I don't submit to save people. If you think it will be one to one, be careful with what you say. Except we change the system that the mindset and makes it difficult for us to be able to produce Except we become a productive nation. Except we now start to tackle the genesis of this national distortion. So, insecurity you have seen is a symptom. Have you ever wondered why growing up the same army that is so powerful cannot get rid of bad things? So you think all of a sudden it just happened? It just happened. You 
You think the system just got destroyed like that? Did it just start? So systematically, and we kept on sifting into our consciousness and our mindsets. That's what you see is getting more difficult. But you see, all of this, they are fit to try to But the thing is, not about this fight at all. So, what are you doing about it in this space? Are you part of the national breed? Because the world has enough to be human need, not human greed. So, we have a leadership that wants to be the agreed and meet our need. It can never be possible. That's why we see how much trigger, 26 and 7 trillion projects. It's not going to go far. You know why? So those are the real agents of this nation. Except to understand that these systems are systems that were built inherently. fire of Nigeria are just victims in all of this. Well, you've had it all. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and drop your comments. Till next time, thank you.